If there's one thing you should take away from this video, it's the understanding that modern archery is a precision shooting sport. And that raises a very good point, and unfortunately it was kind of outside the frame of the original video. Part of my problem is that I have to cater to different levels of archery. Now, some people, of course, are regular archers who shoot different styles and know about different things. And the other audience is the kind of person who only knows archery from pop culture. And that video was explaining something at that level to that latter audience. Of course, that raises the logical question why not compound? And that is a very good question, which is immediately obvious. Uh, and unfortunately, the answer is a lot more boring because it's more organizational and logistical and not so much the spicy, my kung fu is better than your kung fu drama, which you might expect. But we'll go for the answer anyway. Before that, I want to make it clear that I'm not presenting an argument. I'm not saying something should or shouldn't be in the Olympics. I shoot most styles of archery, minus compound ironically, but I promote and enjoy all styles of archery. Uh, I'm not here to represent the Olympic Committee and say, well, we don't want this for this particular reason. All I'm doing is explaining why things are. Now, you might disagree with the way things are, but I'm just here to explain why things are the case today. And going back to the point about target recurve, that has evolved in a very short amount of time, comparatively speaking, to represent the epitome of precision target shooting. We see from the 1950s that people were still using wooden longbows and were transitioning to uh, simple wooden recurve designs. From 1950s to the 1960s, we see uh, stabilizers and sights. And less than 10 years later, we see aluminium risers and aluminium bows. So within around 20 years, we see this huge change of the open freestyle target division from wooden longbows to modern recurves. Generally speaking, that target shooting competition has widely accepted that in order to reach the ideal goals of that particular kind of archery, and I'll say again, that particular kind of archery, they are opening themselves up with the tools and technology that become available in the modern era. And of course, in every step of the way, people diverge. Some people don't like sight and stabilizers. Some people don't like recurve bows. So you see this spread of people who have a different point branched away. But the main branch is the modern recurve division. Which comes back to the question, if precision is the goal, why didn't compound ultimately replace recurve? And therefore, why compound is not in the Olympics? While recurve ultimately replaced traditional bare bow or longbow, compound didn't replace recurve, it came alongside it. Um, compound functions mechanically differently. The bow itself is mechanically different. Um, you have a let off, you have a release aid, you have uh, magnified lenses. So the way a compound works provides significant mechanical advantages, which really makes it unfair to compete against recurve. Um, recurve doesn't actually alter the function of the bow that much because even with sights and stabilizers, it mitigates some of the error margins, but it doesn't change the way you use the bow. You still have to shoot within a certain time limit. It still requires a lot of physical upper body strength and control, but it's not like you can hold it forever and then just shoot. So the recurve division is very separate to the compound division because one, technologically different, Two, function is different. Three, the standards are much, much different. And likewise, recurve doesn't compete with traditional longbow or barebow because again, the standards are very different. Functions very similar, but standards are very, very different. And as long as all these bow types don't compete against each other, then it's a pretty level uh, playing field. So that's why compound didn't replace recurve, but recurve did replace traditional. But why is compound not in the Olympics? Fundamentally, it's not so much a matter of skill or technology, it's just timing. The original archery events were in 1900, for the first event, 1904 and 1908, and then 1920 was the last original archery event in the Olympics. And part of the problem they faced back then was that things were not standardised. There were different rounds, different rules, so people competing couldn't compete on a level playing field. 
Now, we fast forward to 1972, and that's when the uh, archery event was reintroduced into the Olympic program, where it's remained since. Now, that's evolved quite a bit too, in terms of the round shot, the format and all that. Not just the equipment, but the format of the shooting competition has changed to be a bit more spectator friendly. But 1972 was that key day, and at that time, there was pretty much one serious gold standard for target shooting, and that was modern recurve. Compound bows were invented in the late 1960s, early 1970s. So at the time, compound events weren't really a thing yet, and that wouldn't be a major thing until around the late 1970s and 1980s. Nowadays, compound is one of the two major divisions in international um, competitive archery. In fact, any kind of archery. You have compound bows, um, which are perhaps the bigger market in archery, and recurve bows. But compound is not in the Olympics. It is in other World Archery International events, and most national events, or any kind of event, but not in the Olympics. And the simple reason why is that it's much harder to add more events into the Olympics. If there's one thing to get from this video to debate about, perhaps, it's that the Olympic Games is an international multi-sport exhibition event. A very prestigious international uh, multi-sport exhibition event. But it is nonetheless a multi-sport exhibition event. That means that the people who run the Olympic Games, the IOC, don't actually run the sports. They pick the sports to be showcased at the Olympics and the events to be used at the Olympics and they'll nominate the organization which runs that particular event. So that's why you have World Archery in charge of archery, you have uh, FIBA in charge of uh, basketball, you have FIE in charge of fencing and so on. So each sport is represented by their particular organization. Within their own organization, they run their own events, many of which are not in the Olympic program. So when you see World Archery, for example, they do have the World Championships, the World Cup Series, the World Indoor Series, which I shot at um, the other year. Um, you have other events like the Field Championships, the 3D Championships, which include different formats of archery, some which are a lot more exciting than target archery, to be honest. Um, and of course, they allow different bow types. They do allow compound and recurve. They do allow bare bow. That's become um, one of the three three main divisions in target archery, uh, and then you have um, uh, even longbow is defined as a, uh, as, a, as a classification in field and 3D. Not target at the moment, but definitely field and 3D at world level. And below that you have uh, national organizations or state organizations which have their own rule sets, some of which are derived from world archery, but many national organizations do in fact have a longbow or traditional category. So depending on what level you're competing at, there may be plenty of access points for you to compete in that particular field. And I I want to point out here, there are multiple archery organizations, not just World Archery, because there are other forms of archery. There's the International Horse Archery Alliance, um, there's IFAA, the International Field Archery Association, um, and other um, traditional associations which coordinate international archery. Some larger than others, some are more um, organized or run more events than others. But the point is that there are multiple organizations for these events. Um, there are even casual organizations. Um, for example, the largest traditional event is, I think, ETA in the US. Um, or there are Asiatic archery meetups in America and Eastern Europe. So there are plenty of events which people can organize and attend, some competitive, some friendly, but there are multiple events. They exist, and I really want to emphasize that Again, modern archery isn't only that modern reek of weird things sticking out. No, people still shoot trout today. A lot of people do. In fact, I would say most people who do archery today are more inclined to be either compound or trad, reek of being a bit of an oddity in the middle. Point being, though, is that whoever runs the event chooses the rules. In world archery events, it's world archery rules. In the Olympic Games, it's not their event. They are chosen to organize the event but they don't run the Olympics, which means that they are under a different set of limitations. If World Archery 
hypothetically, want to make a trad only event um, or have a combined event. And in fact, they have uh, Conquest Club 2020 was the first Conquest Club, which is normally um, a traditional event. They also added in um, the compound and recap events, and that was officially organized by World Archery. So they do, in fact, have um, multi sport or multi uh, discipline events. But they can do that because they run archery and they can coordinate with other archery clubs and organizations to do that. The Olympic Games runs under different limitations and different rules. And the big part is, of course, that the Olympic Committee has to balance the cost benefit of adding more archery events because World Archery doesn't bear the cost. The host city mostly does with funding and sponsorship, of course, but the host city is the one who pays for the events. And as the Olympic Games becomes wider, more expansive, I should say, um, and many cities are um, finding the financial burden of hosting Olympic Games to be not worth it, it is very challenging to add more things to the Olympic program. Now, I'm not the IOC. I can only speculate why they haven't added events like Compound or Bebo or other archery um, competitions like Field or 3D. Venues are one thing, but there are plenty of venues for this sort of thing everywhere. So it's not really an issue and you can make them. And a lot of archery venues don't require that much investment to do. Uh, a good example is actually the uh, World 3D Championships, which is basically in the um, middle of the city. And they put like, you know, foam targets um, at key locations, which is actually very um, scenic, uh, but it's not hard to do. The main reason I think that it's hard to get more archery events, and they've tried, is because it's hard to justify to the IOC um, the additional costs of bringing more athletes and support staff. Um, if you add compound, that's another 128 athletes plus support staff plus volunteers to run the events um, to the Olympic program, which means more combination needed, uh, more costs in running the events. And if you add Bebo, that's another 128. And if you add more classes, that's 128 each, assuming they're in the same format of 64 male, 64 female, um, you have the ranking rounds and you have the knockouts. Um, can it run? Yes, but it will drive the cost up. And when you have a committee and a city which don't want to expand the cost, they want to cut, keep cut, uh, costs down, they will cut out events which are not popular. They will add events which are currently more trendy or more popular. That's why you see the rise of sports like uh, a lot of the BMX sports, uh, skateboarding, sport climbing. And a part of this too is to showcase events which aren't normally seen by the general public. Um, most people don't, will never ever watch a sport climbing event or um, a, a skateboarding event uh, unless you're already doing a kind of sport. Archery is already well known, so people see compound, they see recurve, what's the difference, who cares, it's still shooting a target. And that's kind of where things kind of fall down in terms of adding more archery events. How do you convince um, the organizer of an event that doesn't actually run the event that this is worth doing. And I think that's why. Again, this isn't my opinion. This isn't my argument. I'm just speculating why Compound is not in the Olympic Games. And that, sadly, is perhaps why Compound is not in the Olympics. Um, it doesn't mean it will never be in the Olympic Games, and hopefully with more pressure um, and more uh, support, it will be included in the Olympic program. But as it stands, it's not likely to be the case. And unfortunately, that also means that other kinds of archery, particularly bearbow, modern bearbow at least, um, that's not likely to make headway unless something changes with um, the way it's organized and the popularity of the sport. So, uh, on that note, it, this isn't really about favoritism. It's not really about um, this bow is better than this bow, or this bow isn't a real bow or real archery. I think there's a vocal minority who want to make it out to be sniping other styles and attacking other archers for not doing real archery. I think that's a vocal minority. By and large, the archery community loves archery of any kind. We love watching traditional archers. We lo I love doing traditional archery. And as much as you know, we would love to see everything in the Olympic Games, we don't choose that. Fortunately, there are plenty of other events and venues where you can do these things. So while you might not see 
field archery or uh, horse archery or 3D archery or you know pole archery in the Olympic Games, the fact that they exist somewhere, someplace, means that you can enjoy these particular events. Um, and that comes down to the final point, which is true for most um, sports, in fact. The Olympic Games is not the premier event. Now, it is for those who uh, have been chosen to be in the Olympic program, but it isn't the main event that people necessarily look forward to. Um, so other sports like basketball, the, the Olympic Games is a nice like side mission, but it's not the main goal. It's like the NBA championships is the most prestigious event. Um, you have like you know football or soccer. You know that that's the, the Olympic Games is not the premier event. It's nice to win it. Um, but it, there are a lot of rules and restrictions of professionalism and you don't really see the best athletes at the Olympic Games. You see them in the World Cup um, or the Club World Championship. That sort of thing is kind of the same in archery as well. And the Olympic Games is probably the prestigious event for Rika of archery, but for everybody else, there's their own competition, the World Cup or the World Championships. So just keep that in mind that the Olympic Games isn't everything. It is a brand name which carries a lot of historical prestige but it isn't what people necessarily go for so just because something isn't in the olympics doesn't mean it's not important and in many cases um, some things only become relevant every four years because of the olympics so with that in mind not being the olympics isn't the be all and end all of archery um, other styles are completely legitimate very competitive in many cases and people do them are very passionate about it and don't let not being the Olympics take away from the validity or the legitimacy of what you do and that's my explanation a little circular and rambly unfortunately but the reason why it's not because it's real archery or not real archery it's because of timing this particular bow was the main bow used in competition at the time and that was chosen um, should the archery event have been included 15 years later maybe a compound would have been the main event who knows and things might change in the future nonetheless no matter what kind of archery you're doing i hope you've been enjoying it especially during these hard times um, if you haven't done archery before then i encourage you to investigate and find out where you can do archery of any kind you want whether traditional or modern every archery has an appeal people who are passionate about archery are doing it for the right reasons and we don't have to tear each other down and say one's fake and one's not real. Everyone can enjoy archery the way it should be. Anyway, I'm New Sensei. Thank you all for watching. Hope you're staying safe where you are. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.